So this is an extra video to prove the factor theorem because we've been using it, but um, we haven't really kind of explained where it comes from. So I want to go through and kind of show you how it works and why it works the way that it does. Um, but we're going to start off with an example, okay? So we're just going to do uh, x cubed plus 4x plus 3 over x plus 1, okay? So we're going to divide this cubic by this linear function. So we're going to just use polynomial division in the grid method, okay? So we want an x cubed, and that would have to be x squared. So x squared times 1 is x squared. Uh, we don't have any x squared, so I've got to take away an x squared. x is into that go minus x. Minus x times 1 is minus x. I want 4x, so I'm going to have to have a 5x there to add up to 4x. Uh, x is into 5x go 5. 5 lots of 1 is 5. Uh, I don't want 5, I want 3, so I've got to take away 2. So this minus 2 that I have here is the remainder. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that when I divide this cubic by this linear function, I get x squared minus x plus 5, and this bit that didn't quite divide... Okay, that remainder that I didn't quite get to divide th all the way through by x plus 1. So I can write this expression as this. Okay, so what we're now going to do is if I uh, multiply everything by that x plus 1, okay, so I move it onto the right hand side. We're going to get x cubed plus 4x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply this by x plus 1. So x plus 1 times by x squared minus x plus 5. And then I multiply the x plus 1 by this as well. So I just get left with the minus 2. So what we find is that whatever function you're starting with, this f of x, you can write it as some linear function, let's say x minus a, times by some quotient function, some other function of x, so that's that bit there, plus some remainder. Okay. Now, what this is actually doing is it's saying that when I divide through by x minus a, a linear function, uh, I can get this remainder appearing. And that's what brings about something called the remainder theorem. So in order to really understand the factor theorem, we must see the remainder theorem as well. So the remainder theorem kind of works behind the scenes. The remainder theorem says that when f of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder is f of a. That's what the remainder theorem says. Okay, so let's just make sure that that's right, okay? Because what we're saying is that when f of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder is f of a. So if I work out what f of a is, so f of a is equal to, well, putting, replacing the x with a, I get a minus a, q, lot, q of a plus r. So clearly, a minus a is just going to be 0. So you get 0 times q of a. So q of a could be anything you like, but this is all going to be 0, and you just get left with r. So I'm saying that the remainder is just f of a. So, in other words, that means that when I divide x cubed plus 4x plus 3 by x plus 1, I get this remainder of minus 2. And I could have calculated it by saying, well, if f of x is the x cubed plus 4x plus 3, then when I divide by x plus 1, 
the remainder will just be f of minus 1. Notice the sign change here, x minus a, x plus 1. So there's the sign change. The a's got to be minus 1. So f of minus 1 is minus 1 cubed plus 4 lots of minus 1 plus 3. So we get minus 1, take away 4, so minus 5, plus 3, which is minus 2. Minus 2 was the remainder. Okay, So clearly, just substituting in that value, um, where the a is minus 1, I can find the remainder directly, without having to do polynomial division. So this is the remainder theorem. Okay, That's what's working behind the scenes. So, how do we go about proving the factor theorem? Well, the factor theorem that's saying that x minus a is a factor of f of x if and only if f of a is 0. I can get rid of the remainder theorem now, can I? Let's get rid of that bit. That if and only if, the double arrow, what that's saying is that it's got to work... Um, and be a logical consequence in both directions. So x minus a is a factor of f of x must mean that f of a is 0. And f of a is 0 must mean that x minus a is a factor of f of x. So we need to check both directions. So if we call this statement A and this one statement B, then let's first check that A implies B. So if x minus A is a factor of f of x, then, so if x minus A is a factor of f of x, then by definition, f of x can be written as some um, well, the linear factor x minus a times some function of x, some other function of x. Okay? Notice how the r's not there because I would be saying that there is no remainder. So if I'm now looking at f of a, then I have a minus a times q of a. A minus A is just 0, so 0 times whatever that is will just be 0. And so I've shown that F of A must be 0 based on that initial statement. So A implies B, and that's true. We now need to confirm that B implies A. So if F of A is 0, OK, what we would have is that f of a is equal to x, oh sorry, is equal to a minus a, lots of q of a, plus r. Okay? Suggesting that perhaps there is an r. But of course all of this has got to be equal to zero. Because if f of a is 0, then all of this must be 0. Now, we know that that's 0. a take away a times q of a, that's 0. So, clearly, r must be 0. So, if r is 0, then f of x must be written as x minus a times q of x. Hence, x minus a is a factor of f of x. And so b implies a. OK? And that is the end of the proof. So you do need to have this understanding of the remainder theorem that is working there in the background. Uh, because from the remainder theorem, we can uh, prove the factor theorem as well. Okay? And that's why it works. 
you must also kind of like be aware that this only works when you're dividing by a linear term by x minus a. OK, um, you can bring a factor out if you like. So you can have 2x minus 3 if you like, for example. Um, so if you were dividing by 2x minus 3, all that you would need to do is bring the 2 out. OK, and then it doesn't change the proof whatsoever. OK, you just need to be aware that you would be substituting in 3 halves rather than uh, just three in order to calculate the remainder, okay?